Happy Monday here at the Scarlet Faithful Podcast. Plenty to cover in regard to men's hoops for Rutgers basketball. Portal season continues just less than uh, 10 days now from the deadline to enter the portal. And uh, a lot of movement across the Big Ten in college basketball. Wanted to really dive into Rutgers uh, for this episode to start the week. But a couple of things I wanted to point out first. Uh, JoJo Lacey, former five-star recruit, has committed to Rutgers women's basketball. Full-time starter at Boston College. Led them in three-pointers this past season. The grad transfer. A big pickup for Coquise Washington and the Scarlet Knights uh, in rebuilding the roster. Talked about Kaylin Smichael. Uh, Transferring to Maryland last week, uh, added five-star guard Kayomi McMiller, and now adding JoJo Lacey from the transfer portal. And we'll be interesting to see what else women's basketball does this offseason. I'll have plenty more on them as the offseason progresses. Also, of course, on Saturday, the Scarlet White game will take place. The end of spring camp and the annual scrimmage will take place at SHI Stadium on Saturday afternoon. I'll have plenty of coverage leading up to Saturday. Plenty of intriguing storylines there, uh, but really wanted to go back and talk about Rutgers men's basketball. A lot of activity in the last couple of weeks, and I think in the next couple of weeks, you're going to see a lot more just also uh, overall in terms of the portal and uh, the market kind of uh, shaking out somewhat. Uh, but in terms of Rutgers, you know, last end of last week, they had Jay Don Jones, the wing from Long Beach State, uh, 37% career three-point shooter, former Big West Defensive Player of the Year. He visited towards the end of last week. Uh, and uh, no uh, no commitment, obviously, after he left. Uh, it is reported that I, I said last week uh, Oklahoma and Butler were schools of interest, and it does uh, appear that they are pursuing him. Uh, so whether he visits there or not will remain to be seen. Uh, and, you know, will Rutgers still have a spot available uh, when he ultimately decides all things to consider, uh, I think that he is exactly what they need in terms of a 3 and D uh, player. Uh, it is interesting in learning that, you know, it was reported, uh, Steve Peichel said it in his pod, that, you know, they reached out to him. There's no prior connection there. Uh, assistant Mike Larkin uh, had uh, I essentially, you know, called him, and uh, they got him on a visit. So that's impressive uh, for a guy that, you know, is from Long Beach originally, played only at Long Beach State. So, uh, you know, to get him to fly cross country, obviously, uh, official visits, you know, uh, is, is on the program, but still, um, you have to hope that there's, uh, you know, that, that ultimately it works out, but, um, if not, you know, Rutgers is going to move on. And, uh, I know that, uh, one thing I wanted to talk about was just portal, uh, candidates names that pop up, you know, Andrew Carr's one, uh, the, uh, big from Wake Forest, who's from right outside Villanova, Westchester, and, uh, you know, there were some reports last week that Rutgers was, uh, you know, attempting to get involved. Uh, and uh, then you have, uh, you know, Luke Goody from Illinois, the sharpshooter uh, wing who entered the transfer portal today. He's already being linked to Indiana. He's from Fort Wayne. Uh, and then you also have uh, credit to Mikey, uh, Mike Broadbent, excuse me, and Richie O'Leary at uh, the Night Report. Uh Mentioning the connection with Felix Opara, excuse me, uh, from uh, Ohio State, who entered the transfer portal this weekend, uh, is uh, from the Chattanooga. He's from Nigeria, which Rutgers has a long connection with, but also played uh, in Chattanooga, uh, Tennessee, and has a connection to East Bailey's Garden, Guardian, who also was his coach and uh, currently coaches Akpara's younger brother. Uh, so that is certainly intriguing. Um, but, you know, the connections to Tennessee – uh, it sounds like University of Tennessee is the favorite there. So with all three of those names, they're all intriguing names that would all help Rutgers tremendously. They're all kind of being linked to their uh, schools that are local to them and not even being uh, mentioned in terms of NIL also being a factor, which I could tell you. you know, there, there are certain programs when you hear their names or when I hear those names, I know that it's going to be an uphill battle. Villanova. Uh, you know, is certainly one that, you know, is, is reportedly has spent, you know, over three million, three to four million. They're, they're in the upper echelon in terms of what programs spend with NIL. I know Ohio State, from what I've been told by multiple sources, that, you know, they're one of the top in terms of what they, they pay their players. So you have to imagine Akpara leaving Ohio State. Uh, you know, his expectations for NIL uh, are probably pretty high. 
uh, if not just, you know, if, you, if you're looking at, uh, it's like talking about leaving a job, right? Um, you know, uh, keeping them whole, right? I, I don't know if Rutgers is in a position to do that based on what I've heard about Ohio State. Uh, and then also Goody, you know, leaving Illinois, which is a, a strong NIL package there as well. Uh, and it does sound like Indiana is the favorite. I mean, they're, you know, reportedly spending four to five million on this year's roster. So uh, I think it shows that Rutgers is doing their due diligence. They're, they're, they're contacting, potentially contacting or, you know, of interest players that make sense for them. But again, the reality of reaching out to a player, uh, expressing interest, uh, gauging interest from the player and actually getting them on a visit and getting them to commit. I mean, it's all different types of levels. And, um, you know, there's a lot of obstacles. And uh, when you're talking about, you know, hometown connections and NIL, that is a lot to overcome. So uh, while any of those three, Andrew Carr, Luke Goody, or uh, Felix Akpara, would be tremendous additions for Rutgers, I, I, I don't expect Rutgers to land any of them. You know, and that's just my, my honest take there. Uh, so I think that with that being said, and I've talked about the big man market at length. I, I, I started thinking more about what the roster is, is currently for Rutgers. You're not right. And they have 11 scholarship players. First off, if you watched uh, on the NBA app, the Jordan Brand Classic uh, on Sunday night, Dylan Harper uh, just was so impressive and, uh, you know, was the name the MVP of the game, had uh, at one point uh, down the stretch, made three consecutive three-pointers, Missed on his fourth attempt, grabbed the offensive rebound and scored a layup. He also hit the game-winning three uh, for his team. So uh, he had 30 points in the game. Uh, just his his ability as a scorer, as a distributor, his uh, IQ, uh, his calmness on the court, his leadership, uh, he is uh, super impressive. And, you know, I think – Everyone felt victim a little bit too. And and yes, it's still going to be another COVID year, right? And you can't win with all freshmen these days. But Rutgers isn't trying to win with all freshmen. But they're going to have the best freshman guard in the country. And I think one of the best guards in the country, period, next season. As soon as Dylan Harper's on the court for that first game, he qualifies in that category. He uh, What he brings to the table for this team, he's going to be able to elevate Rutgers uh, – it's all going to obviously depend on the supporting cast. And that's why everyone's on the edge of their seat on what big man they can bring in. But I think that it's easy to forget the level, you know, we're not just talking about normal freshmen. I've seen a lot of comments. Oh, well, they're freshmen. They're fresh. Yeah. They're freshmen. This is a projected top five pick. This is arguably the number one recruit in the, in the 24 class. This is a guy that his pedigree with his father, with his brother, with his mother, uh, with, you know, been in the way he's excelled in every all-star game there is this off season. Uh, just uh, the, the um, experience he's going to bring to the table, playing for Team USA last summer and this summer. Uh, this is as seasoned as a freshman point guard as you're ever going to get. His size, he's a complete physical uh, mismatch for, for opponents. Uh, and he is just, he's not normal. He's not normal. He's a special player. And Rutgers is, it, it's going to be so much fun to watch this team in general. But Dylan Harper, what he brings to the table, and, and 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 just in terms of the perception and the talk and the buzz he's going to bring the program, not even mentioning Ace Bailey was a potential and talent to be a number one pick if all things go well. So things are super exciting. Ace Bailey did not play in the Brand Classic. He went to his prom. Good for him. Uh, but uh, you know he's a, he's a dynamic scorer. Uh, he uh, is a uh, really good defender, uh, and he's going to be just scary in transition. And him and Harper, the vibe they have and the, the connection they have, uh, is really going to allow them to hit the ground running. Uh, and you can move, you can move Ace around, you know. And I think I've talked about it at length. Rutgers wanted to space the floor to run, uh, and uh, those are two versatile players that are going to be able to defend multiple positions, and they're going to be really hard to defend for opponents. Uh, I think another freshman that people are forgetting about. This brings in my discussion about the big men is Lathan Somerville, who, by the way was number two in terms of Mr. Illinois uh, from Illinois High School Player of the Year uh, and really excelled as a senior. He's a guy that was a lot smaller when he was growing up, developed a lot of guard skills. His father uh, played overseas with uh, Rutgers assistant TJ Thompson, uh, and uh, who, was, who was a wing, his father. Uh, so he grew into his body. Uh, now he's 6'10". He's big body. 
He needs to, you know, to, uh, really, uh, you know, hit the weight room hard uh, to muscle up a little bit. But, you know, physically, he's not far off. And he's got the skills. He, 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 he's, a, he's a true stretch big. You know, he can step out and hit the shot. He can handle the rock. Uh, he's going to give Rutgers a completely different look. And I think that the staff believes that he's ready. Is he ready to be a 30-minute starter? You know, that's asking a lot, I think. And you can't put all your eggs in one basket, for sure. Cannot do that. But I think in looking at Lathan Somerville and looking at the big man market, where NIL is for big men, you know, it's just a reality. Rutgers is not going to get a top 15 big man. They're just not because the NIL uh, demands, I just think, are out of reach. You know, and it's not to say Rutgers doesn't have NIL to work with. They do. I think they have six figures. But you're talking about, I mean, Amari Williams, who Rutgers was linked with early, right? I said his demand was 600000 He He just ended up at Kentucky, right? I mean, people keep asking for Cliff to come back. Cliff's not coming back. He, he, he's commanding, you know, upwards of 750 or, or, or more in terms of NIL. And it's just, it's, it's not that, you know, Rutgers should be considered at fault for not being able to meet that. It doesn't mean it's a lack of preparation. Uh, you know, there's not many programs in the country that can, that can have uh, afford that level of NIL support for one player, let alone a whole roster. And I think that Rutgers has done a good job of um, – adding through the transfer portal in terms of experienced players. Uh, and they have two spots to fill. And they do absolutely have to get a front court player. But all I'm saying is I think that, you know, we're all – you get the Kentucky, right? Kentucky is uh, bombs out of the NCAA tournament with all freshmen, which wasn't completely true. And you can't win with freshmen. And now you have to have a big, a true top big man to be able to be good next year. And I just don't think either – is actual reality with this Rutgers team. I think Lathan Somerville is going to have an opportunity to contribute right away. I've said all summer or all off season, I think he's going to be part of the rotation. And, um, you know, I, I've even said before, you know, is it a platoon with another big man? Is it uh, the opportunity to uh, maybe he's going to come off the bench and ultimately win the starting job? Steve Peichel loves to not emphasize starting and just talking about development and who's in the end of the game. Uh, you know, how Lathan Somerville develops, you know, on the free throw line as a freshman, how can he rebound? Rutgers desperately needs rebounding. Uh, I think some of the guys they have can rebound well for the position, um, but they are, they are late up front, you know, and, but again, if you're going to space the floor, if you're going to stretch the floor, if you're going to run the floor, um, I've said before, they, they don't need a big who's going to post up 10 times a game and get, you know, shots off the block. They need a big who could run, who can uh, create opportunities of offense of the offensive glass in transition as the trailer cleaning up the glass, getting passes from, you know, so many different ball handlers. And that's another thing, you know, uh, I think it's brilliant from Rutgers in terms of the ball handlers. They're going to surround Dylan Harper with, because it's going to take the onus off him. You know, the days of one guy bringing the ball up, right. I mean, between Gio and Paul, like that's all Rutgers had for a long time. And, you know, that you're not going to have to be reliant on one guy bringing the ball up next year. You're going to have Jeremiah Williams. You're going to have Jordan Durkak, who officially signed on Monday. You're going to have Tyson Acuff. You're going to have uh, Jermichael Davis. And you're going to have Dylan Harper. Those are all five guards that can handle the rock and bring the ball up. So I think that that is key. I think it's going to help in the transition game in terms of having different guards that can, you know, move the ball up the floor and, and get out on the break. It's going to allow Dylan Harper to play on the ball, play off the ball. Uh, and also those guys that like Jeremiah Williams and Tyson Acuff be able to play off the ball with Dylan with the ball. It's they're, they're, they're a very versatile team. Uh, and again, it's all about fit. How do the puzzle pieces fit together? And uh, interesting note, Bart Torvik, a uh, great analytical site. I, I don't reference him enough, but I do uh, look at him even more and more in terms of his stats and his uh, 25, uh, 24, 25, uh, season projections came out from analytical perspective, uh, on Monday and he has Rutgers as number 24 right now. And that's with an incomplete roster. Now, granted, everyone has an incomplete roster, so they easily could move back as other teams fill out the roster. But the reality is he has them at number 24 right now. You can even play around. It's fun. You can tinker with adding players. If they did have, uh, Jadon Jones ultimately commits, he's got him at 18th. But right now, 24th without a starting big, per se. Uh, but again, Rutgers has Somerville at 6'10". They have uh, Emmanuel Agbole, 
who obviously is extremely raw, but I mean, he is a monster in terms of her size. Um, and, you know, Rutgers needs to add another presence. Uh, they do have Zach Martini, who's more of a stretch four. Uh, but I think it does, it doesn't pin them, you know, they, they're, they're not reliant on having to get as much as people want to say they have to get a, a top 15 starting big. They don't have to. You know, there's plenty of teams that succeed at the high major level without, you know, a uh, top center that is offensive first. You know, you obviously need a rim defender. You need a rim disruptor. You need a rebounder. You need a guy that can operate in space and uh, be willing and happy to score when he can create opportunities for himself. And uh, listen, with the guard play they're going to have, with the passers they're going to have, uh, you're going to be able to get – if you're big, you're going to be able to get some high percentage shots down low. And uh, so it's going to be interesting. You know, uh, Akpari even, you know, kind of platooned a little bit at Ohio State. Uh, he's leaving now with Aaron Bradshaw getting there. So they very well could target another power five big, that kind of split time wherever they were. Uh, and the plan maybe is to have them split time with, with Somerville. Or, again, maybe that guy starts and Somerville, you hope, maybe can overtake him as the year goes on. There's lots of ways you can go with this. The idea that they have to have a starting top 15 big man you know, I, I just don't think that that's what – it would be nice. It would be great. But I, I also don't think it's realistic at this time. So how they fill out the roster is going to be fascinating to see. Uh, I, I do think they need a 3D guy still. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see who else they pursue here. And I think the last thing I wanted to say was just in terms of a talent perspective, right? Ace and Dylan alone, uh, two of the top three highest rated freshmen there is. Uh, but with, with Jeremiah Williams – uh, with Acuff, with Durkak, uh, with Martini, uh, with uh, uh, Lathan Somerville. And I even mentioned Dylan Grant or Bryce Dorch. Bryce Dorch, you know, uh, has been compared to Caleb McConnell in terms of his length and defensive uh, ability. He can create scoring opportunities on his own. Dylan Grant is uh, really strong uh, and really crafty. Uh, and those guys, you know, I don't. I, it's going to be interesting to see if they crack the rotation or not. I mean, you can't play 13 guys. So... I still think Rutgers will fill out their last two spots, but I do think that everyone needs to take a step back. And rather than look at what Rutgers doesn't have at the moment, look at what they do have. This is, I mean, it's not even really an argument about last season, right? Yes, of course, they're far and away more talented than last season, but it's really more of how talented is this team comparatively to programs, program history. And I, on paper, they're, they're as talented as, you know, Pretty much Rutgers has ever had him. You know, obviously the 76 Final Four team, uh, I would say, is more talented. Um, but time will tell. But this this team has a chance, I mean, to be really, really, really good. And the whole idea, oh, this team's going to go to the Final Four. I hate when people say that. You have no idea. Matchups, you know, bracket, all that. Just maximize your potential as a team. You know, can they can they become the team we all hope they are in February? Can they peak at the right time? Uh, can they, can Pykele balance the rotation? Can they keep Tim Kim chemistry together? Uh, can everybody meld together? Uh, can they play on selfish basketball? Can they be relentless on the defensive end? They're going to have some weaknesses, right? But in terms of free throw shooting, in terms of three point shooting, you know, everyone is, uh, I think forgetting that, you know, Tyson Acuff had two collegiate seasons, one in the A-10, one in the Mac shooting 35% or better from three point range. Obviously last season, was his worst season from three. But again, shot selection is a big part of that. Um, you know, you have a Martini who shot 38% last year. I mean, Dylan showed you last night what he could do for three-point range. Ace shot over 40% as a high school senior from three. Uh, so, you know, that's not even counting everybody else they add. If you can have four three-point shooters over 35%, right, that would be a huge upgrade offensively for Rutgers. Again, Bart Torvik. Rutgers projected number 24th analytically right now for next season. That's going to change a ton as rosters continue to fill out. But that just shows you with the existing 11 scholarship players they have, right? They're, they're, they're in a good position. They could always be better. You know, they're not going to add big names and big money guys like Michigan, Ohio State, and Indiana are doing. And I know it's hard to watch that happen, but it's just the reality. But are they building a good supporting cast that's going to allow this team to be really difficult to defend and a nuisance defensively, very disruptive. I think they're going to press a lot. I think they're going to be able to show a lot of different looks, uh, rotational and lineup versatility, flexibility. 
I've always wanted to see Steve Peichel having that truly one through 10, what he could do. And I think that they're building towards that. Oh, it's hard to be patient, but positive vibes in terms of what this team has right now. I think they're in a position where it's, you know, obviously getting towards end of April, but uh, the roster's in good shape. It's not in great shape on paper because you still need a big, I'd still want another shooter slash D guy, but right now, you know, they've certainly done some really, really good work this off season. It's going to be exciting to see how they close it out. Uh, and uh, obviously updates all around. And like I said, big names are great. I would love for them to get some of those guys. Akpar would be phenomenal. He'd be perfect for them. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of a lot of uh, obstacles to get through. And now I'm sounding like Steve Peichel. Uh, but, uh, you know, just remember, NIL is involved in everything. And when you hear certain schools' names, uh, me personally, I don't put too much hope in it. We'll see what happens. Last thing I wanted to know, it came out this weekend with the Yale Daily News on Saturday, talking about Jonathan Holloway, the president of Rutgers, being in line to potentially be the next president of Yale. He previously worked there for a long time. So that is something of note. He's been tremendous for Rutgers Athletics. Uh, and uh, hopefully, you know, he does remain at Rutgers. But it's something to keep, uh, something to monitor here. Uh, as the weeks go on in this offseason and, uh, you know, not touching too much on spring sports right now. Unfortunately, men's and women's across have been struggling. Uh, the Big Ten tournament comes up this weekend. I'll cover it more later. Uh, Rutgers baseball got swept at Iowa. Uh, you did have Rutgers softball win, uh, win a series against Minnesota, which is great for them. Track and field did a bunch of stuff uh, in terms of breaking records. I'll talk about more about them later on. Um, but, uh, yeah. Rutgers basketball portal season continues, men's and women's spring game coming up on Saturday. Lots more to talk about this week. Thanks so much for listening and watching here at the Scarlet Faithful Podcast once again. 